This is how you take a Phantom 2 body shell apart. Tools that you will need, small Phillips screwdriver and a 2mm Allen driver. There are three screws per leg holding the body together. You have one, two, three hex screws and one Phillips screws. First we'll remove is the hex screws. Do this for each of the legs. Okay, once you've got all the screws out, that's ready to lift the lid. So we just flip it over, take off these, and lift your lid. And that's you now inside the Phantom. We're going to fit the interference filter. These were released just after the initial batch of 3-axis Zemuse gimbals and this is required just to uh, eliminate some of the jello that was sometimes caused on certain videos. Now, first thing we need to do is put the little sticky pads on the back and that will be ready to fit. Now, this is the Zemuse cable here. This is the one that will actually be going down to the cable. So we need to pull that through but first, when your Phantom's new, the cable will be taped to the bottom of the body because we're going to have to snip this cable tie and we're just going to have to pull that through slightly. Just give it a wee firm tug on the cable and that will pop up. Put that to the side. Now this is the filter board. Move that closer. And this goes in in this direction so the capacitor goes towards where the cable is. However, this is the cable that will be going into it. So the first thing to check is you'll notice that the connector pins are actually off to one side and that corresponds with the actual filter. So make sure you get that in the right way first of all. Just line it all up nice, little bit of pressure and then it just clips in. Now the next thing we have to do is we have to just tuck that cable under there because this cable will now be going into the board. So once again, just check that the pins are on the correct side corresponding with that. And that's that pretty much ready. Now the next thing we need to do, just so it's ready to go on, we just peel the backing off. Now the best thing to do is actually to plug this in first reason being is it gives you an idea, it's quite a tight fit and it gives you a bit of an idea of how much you've got to play with. We just put that in there and then press it in and then we just flip that round like that. Now the thing to watch out for is there is a small capacitor in the back of that, a little small chip. So just watch you're not pressing against that when you stick it in. We just line it up and then just lay it down. It is a little bit, this cable, it's not tight, but it's also not slack. So just watch out for that. And that is basically the filter fitted. And then we can just pull that cable back down. And that's that all done. One thing to remember when you're putting your body shell back on the top, it is imperative that the body top goes back on the same way. Make sure that you see the pattern on the leg matching back up again. You can see where the stickers go, so you make sure you've got it on one leg and you've also got it on the other leg. Otherwise, if you get the top on 90 degrees out, your Phantom won't fly properly. Fitting the new Zemuse H3 3D gimbal. First, we open up the box. We have an accessory pack and we have the mount for the gimbal and we have the gimbal itself. Now 
Now first we need to open the accessory pack because we will need the drop screws and the mounting screws. The ones that we need are these ones here, which are the M3 by 5, the silver ones. First thing we need to do is we need to fit the anti-drop screws into the mounting bracket. Now the mounting bracket goes on in a particular way, so that's how it's going to go on. So the holes closest to the rubbers actually go to the rear. Now you only use two anti-drop screws and they go in diagonal corners. Now it's important that you put it into the correct corner, otherwise as they do stick down a bit, it will actually hit the gimbal as it moves and could cause it to go into hibernation mode. So put those two on like that. Then using your M3 by 5 screws, you can attach it. I don't tighten it down fully. screws are lining up. Okay, now we need to fit the actual gimbal itself. Now the first thing to do is to plug the Zemuse cable into the back of the gimbal. Now again watch out, the pins are offset which corresponds with the actual connector so ensure you get them plugged in the right way. So we'll just plug that in. That's it clipped in. Then just lower that on top. Sorry, I've got a cable in the road there. like that. Now, easiest way to do to get the rubbers in, if you just pinch the rubbers and then just poke them in and just work them in with your fingers. A bit hard with the transmitter being in the back corner there, but just work it in. And like that, then we can just tuck the cabling in underneath. Now the best thing to do now is just to move that round. Is just to tidy up the actual Zen Muse cable, and we can use the white tape that comes supplied with the Phantom. And just stick like that on there, it up a wee bit. That just stops it flapping about in the wind, just neatens it up slightly. Just put the cabling in. That just holds all that down and neat. Now, your Phantom is just ready to have the GoPro fitted. Always remember with the Phantom 2 or any Zemu's uh, gimbal, never power the Phantom on without the GoPro camera mounted into the gimbal, otherwise the gimbal will absolutely freak out. And just one other thing regards to video transmitters. Never switch on your Phantom or switch on your video transmitter without an antenna attached, otherwise it will blow the video transmitter and you'll end up with no range. 
One last thing to do now that we've got the gimbal mounted on, I tend to fully test the gimbal with the NASA Assistant and update all the firmwares just in case you have to take it off. But remember, once you've done, oops, remember to fit the clips onto the anti-drop screws. They just simply go over and then clip in place. One there and one there. And that's you ready to go.